Audio Wrangling is a sister site to Audio Angling, allowing people with angling and related topics to express them freely as an insight into what some of the issues were in the early part of the 21st century. My name's Phil Williams and this is a 2014 recording with Dr. Mike Ladle. We just completed an hour-long interview looking at all aspects of your background in fishing. But before we sign off, can I first ask you to imagine yourself stood on a soapbox having a good old heartfelt rant about any issue you'd like to get off your chest? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, and, and it, won't be, it won't take two minutes, I don't think. I think the worst thing that ever happened to angling, sport fishing, or whatever you want to call it, was the division which happened centuries ago into game, course, and sea fishing. Because to me, they're all fishing. And that's part of the division that is, it still persists. You'll still find plenty of trout fishing magazines and things where people are saying, you know, how wonderful it is and artistic it is to fly fish. I've nothing again. I do it a lot. I enjoy it. But they're all just fishing and they're all just fish and I love fish and it's a pity everybody's not the same. With a knock-on effect I suppose to the uncoordinated and pitiful way we manage our fish stocks. Absolutely, yeah. They ban all sorts of things, don't they? This is why I like sea fishing, I think. I really object to being told how to fish. Either you, they want you to catch fish or they don't. And there are some things that, I mean... I was on a, a government fisheries committee which met for, oh, I think, well over a year, uh, which was looking at the recreational fishing and so on. And there were, not to put too fine a point on it, there was a, a move among the committee who were mostly not anglers to ban live baiting. And it was only really me and one other chap who stood up and said that it's nonsense, the fish would get eaten anyway. But it's in the minds of people, I'm afraid, that it's wrong to do this sort of thing. I mean, ultimately you finish up so you can't put a, a worm or a maggot on a hook to catch something. Ultimately, what do you do? You know, It's the mentality these days of people who see their food, I mean, if they see a fish, it's usually wrapped up in polythene in the supermarket. I think they should make everybody go out and catch their own, and then that would solve a lot of the problems. They'd realise how damn difficult it is to do these things. But isn't that what the Anglin Trust is supposed to be there for? Reunification fighting a common cause. It would be nice to think it could. I think I'm long enough in the tooth to realise it's very unlikely nowadays for that to happen. I don't think it'll ever get the membership or the backing of people. Because even now, you'll find they disagreeing about things like, the, you mentioned it before, about licences and so on. Sea anglers, you'll find a huge proportion of them don't want a licence. And I can see why. But unless you've got something like that, you've got very little leverage on the powers that be to do anything. And similarly with bag limits and so on, you know, the way I look at it is, if we don't have bag limits and size limits, then you can't expect the commercials to do it. And they might not anyway. I mean, it might not do any good. But I don't think... I'd be very surprised if the Angling Trust manages to achieve a great deal. They had organisations in the past which were ostensibly for the same purpose, and they never managed to do it. So you've still got these great rifts between... Do you think sea fishing's chucking out half a pound of lead, don't they, and, and just sitting there all day. That, if you asked a, a sort of standard fly fisherman, that's what he would tell you, and he would say that, oh, spinning's a crude way of fishing or something like that, you know, and vice versa. And he'd say that fly fishermen are all snobs and whatnot. So we'll never get a unified voice, I don't think. Not in my lifetime, anyway, which isn't not very much longer, I have to say. <laughs> it's a bit pessimistic, that, is it? <laughs> what do you think? Much the same as you in many ways. The Anglin Trust seem to be making all the right noises, but without much in the way of backing, which from sea anglers they most certainly haven't got, so noise is pretty much all it is. No real muscle to back things up. 
But if the sea angling license equates to tighter controls and more fish, then so be it. Better to buy into something meaningful than spend the same 20 quid on bait, then have nothing to target with it. Absolutely. Well, I think you mentioned in, in your notes that you sent me about the USA and the striped bass fishing. They've actually managed to sort it, haven't they, over there? It's not back to what it was. I was in Cape Cod about uh, four years ago now. Uh, it's the only time I've been. And a lot of the bass club members go over there for the holidays now. I'm not a fish chaser, so I don't do that sort of thing. It was fantastically enjoyable. But talking to the local fishermen, even there, where they've more or less, you know, they stopped commercial fishing, they they stopped anglers taking more than, I think, two bass they can take or something like that, and they, they have rigid size limits on, and you, you actually do get hammered if you don't stick to these things. Even there, the striped bass fishing isn't like it was 30 or 40 years ago. So even when you do it, it takes a hell of a long time for things to correct themselves. And, of course, what will happen then is people will start moaning, oh, well, it's not doing any good, it's not working, sort of thing. So it really is, it's almost a sort of, it's like wading in treacle trying to get these things to happen, I'm afraid. So best thing to do is, like you and me, to go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> and grow even older, gracefully. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, disgracefully, then.